Welcome to the module Making the Most of Calendar Time. Today we will look at going over the appropriate use of calendar time. Uh, this time is just the time in your morning meeting or the time right before math where you might be doing some calendar math, um, looking at daily skills, uh, today is, yesterday was, tomorrow will be, that type of thing. Um, we're going to talk about how this time can be very beneficial to students if we make the most of it. And then we'll be going into some strategies that we can use and activities that we can use during this time to make the most of this time. Uh, our objectives or our expected outcomes for today are to identify the purpose of calendar time, explore the concept of time and what we want students to grasp related to this concept, and then focus on the K2 critical areas of number and place value, and to identify strategies or resources and activities for building um, these areas into calendar time or calendar math and then identify some resources to support your calendar math. The first thing I wanted to do is just give you a moment to do a quick think-pair-share, either think about it by yourself or if you have other people to talk to in the room, go ahead and talk about this. What you'll do is you can pause the video for a moment and talk about what is something that you like about calendar time and what is something you do not like about this time. Hopefully you've had a chance to think about the things that you like and do not like about calendar time. Uh, one thing that teachers typically say is that this time is a good time for doing some good spiraled review of uh, math skills at the K2 level. Uh, something that teachers do not like about calendar time or calendar math is the redundancy, the repetitiveness. It gets really boring because you're doing the same thing every single day. Um, I remember when I taught first grade, when I taught kindergarten, I could walk away from that calendar math and the students would still continue right on without me because they were just so used to this procedure of calendar math. Originally, the purposes of calendar time were for teachers to teach the concepts of time, for students to really uh, get this concept over time throughout the entire year. Um, also for teachers to provide real life opportunities to apply math concepts of time and counting and all of these spiral re review or spiral skills that we do during this, um, this section. Um, also, like I just said, the spiral math concepts. So the student, the teachers can spiral back and review things that we've learned throughout the year on a daily basis. So for example, that understanding of counting to 100 to celebrate the 100 days of school or building place value into that to track the days of school. And then lastly, to build these concepts over time every day. So that repetitiveness um, that students can get through this opportunity um, to see these concepts over and over again every day. But here's a caution about calendar time, actually a few cautions about calendar time. So first, calendar time typically focuses on rote procedures. Uh, that just means that there, there's no, not a lot of thinking going on. It's just, let's memorize, today is, yesterday was, tomorrow will be. Just all of those basic procedures. A calendar time also typically lacks whole class engagement. Usually it's the calendar helper doing all the math or the teacher doing all the math. Uh, the class might participate by answering. But again, when you are answering, it's really just that rote procedure and there's not a lot of thinking. Uh, this time also teaches to the middle. Even if a student comes in day one knowing what day today is, yesterday was, and tomorrow will be, they're going to practice it 170 more 79 more times throughout the rest of that year. So there really isn't much differentiation. Uh, also, lastly, the teacher is the one doing most of the thinking, the talking, and the mathematics. But we want the students doing all that thinking and the talking and the mathematics. One other caution about time, now we did say that calendar time or calendar math is when we're trying to develop this concept about time, but really this time is so hard for students to grasp, especially at the K2 level, because it's so ambiguous. There's not a concrete way of really telling the students or helping the students understand what time means for them to touch it and feel it, um, because it's socially constructed. This, this concept of time is constructed out of, um, you know, societal needs. It's not really one of those concrete create 2 plus 2 is the same amount as 4. Um, and again, like I just said, it's, it's very abstract. So, so this abstract concept is really very hard for students to grasp. 
One goal that most teachers have as it relates to calendar time is they really want students to understand that time is sequential, that today is, yesterday was, or the months of the year and how it cycles back, or the days of the week, and it's this sequence um, of things or of names that occur. Uh, for example, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, morning, afternoon, and evening and then Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Um, but again, these are very abstract concepts and they're very hard for students to grasp. Research shows that in order for students to understand these concepts of today, tomorrow, and yesterday, a child has to be able to construct where they are in time, construct that reference point of here I am, and in position to where I am, this is yesterday and this is tomorrow. Uh, and understand that this reference point is only a single moment in this whole continuous process or this sequence of events. So today is Wednesday, so that makes yesterday Tuesday. But then if today is Friday, that makes yesterday Thursday. This is very confusing to, to young children. And lastly, they must be able to, students must be able to conceptualize before and after. Before they can even say yesterday, today, tomorrow, they must understand what those concepts before and after are in future and past. And again, these are very abstract, tough concepts for K-2 students. Just a little bit more about the research behind time, young children and time. Um, understanding the relative lengths of time or distance of past or future events from the present, this is also really hard for students. So for example, how far away is October 30th uh, from October 5th? That's very abstract. Um, five and six year olds cannot judge distances or lengths of time. They have difficulty judging the length of time even within a day, such as two hours versus four hours. Um, all of this time is, like we keep saying, abstract, socially constructive, and ambiguous. <clears throat> so a little bit more research about time, and I think this is huge. The ability to judge the relative time from a past event or until a future event when it comes to those terms of a calendar year, that ability is not in place until sometime between the ages of seven to 10. Which is really interesting because this time that we're spending on telling time at, during our calendar math usually is happening uh, in the K through two classrooms or when students are five, six, or just turning seven. So there, that ability isn't even there for them to grasp those concepts. Um, children don't learn these concepts of time by watching the teacher during ca calendar math um, or by counting the number of days they've been in school or even by finding all of the days with the um, that begin with the letter T. These, this, All of the effort that we're putting into this, we're putting a ton of effort into it, but that effort just might not be paying off because developmentally students just aren't ready for it. Now teachers are putting a ton of effort and in, in having good intentions trying to help students understand time, um, but like we said, developmentally students just aren't there. So instead, um, young children develop that understanding by connecting it in ways that have meaning to them. So really connecting it in some concrete, meaningful situation, such as um, if students can count and record the days until a special event, or the days that have passed since their birthday. A true understanding of time only comes with age and maturity and then when the students obviously are developmentally ready. One example uh, that you could do to really help students start to grasp that concept of time is to do a counting down chart. Um, this, this chart says days until, and then the teacher wrote down the 100 day party. So the students might start at 10 and count down ten, when there's 10 days away and each day cross out a day. Now there's nine days away and eight days away until we get closer and closer. This helps students uh, build that understanding that time um, passes, and then it gets them ready for learning those more abstract concepts. Now that we've talked about time being very abstract and hard for students at the K-2 level to grasp and almost not developmentally appropriate for them, what can be a better use of calendar time? Well, my suggestion is that we select focus um, standards from our grade level and really dig into those standards during this calendar time. Um, 
we could provide spiral review review related to these standards. And there are several standards at the K2 level that are the major work of the grade or the major must-have standards, like place value, number sense, problem solving. I would spend my, my calendar time for really digging into those standards. Um, the other really great thing about calendar time is it's relevant and meaningful. Uh, you could use real world situations of what are some current events or some events coming up uh, and do problem solving related to those. And then the best way that we can focus on calendar time is by digging into the math practice standards. Uh, this is a great way to focus, do some problem solving, doing some talking or constructing arguments or doing some modeling and using the calendar as an appropriate tool for problem solving. Uh, so this is a great way to build in those, those practice standards. Uh, talking about focusing in on the standards, if you look right here, here are the time standards related to K2 mathematics, and it's interesting because at the kindergarten level, there are no standards related to telling time, which is only interesting to me because typically calendar time is the biggest and most important at the kindergarten level. So when we do select skills or concepts to focus on during this calendar math or calendar time, try to focus only on what standards you're doing within math. Uh, at first grade, that could be telling and writing time in hours and half hours. At second grade, that could be telling time um, to the nearest five minutes. But a more a better place to go with the standards would probably be that major work of the grade with that number sense and that place value. So as we just said, focusing in on the standards, those major standards for the grades, K through 2, are focusing in on number sense, addition and subtraction, and place value. So really prioritizing and, and doing some good spiral review of these concepts. We'll look at some strategies for building these into calendar time uh, a little bit later on. Uh, one real world application of doing calendar time is just to have a blank calendar. I know a lot of teachers uh, will put calendars up, <clears throat> excuse me, with their smart board, but then when the calendar comes down, or when the smart board comes down, the calendar comes down. So they no longer have that tool, that interactive tool that they could really refer to throughout the day. So instead, have this blank calendar and use it for something. This uh, teacher right here used it for sharing time, and the students could sh sign up for different days of the week. So it's still building in days, dates, um, months of the year, but there's that real world application now. Another real world application is by uh, talking about what the day is and having um, the days on a circle model. So then as you turn the circle, you see that the days are cyclical. They will cycle back. Um, this a circle. I like this one because it has an image of a house on the weekends and a school during the school days. So the students will see after the weekend cycles back to another school day. And this still builds in the concept of yesterday and tomorrow, but in a more concrete way. Um, another way that we could build in uh, real world situations, but also really build in those practice standards, is to do a daily question. Uh, my suggestion is to do a daily yes or no question. Uh, the students can graph their or post the responses using either like a sticky um, dot or you could put velcro and have like just little um, double double sided circle chips and the students can graph um, yes or no for the do they have a pet um, this also built in place value because typically the yeses might have 11 12 13 14 yeses so you can build in that concept of 10 plus some more one caution I wanted to make about the tools that we use during calendar time, I would probably suggest not using tools like the uh, straws, the bundling of straws, to track the number of days of school. The reason for that is students can't easily look at these and say, oh, okay, that's a 10, or okay, that's a 100, because you really don't feel like that bundle is 100. It still looks like a stick. It looks still very similar to the 10 or to a 1. Um, and you really can't see that magnitude or that size. So instead of using uh, things like straws, bundles of straws, my suggestion is if you're going to track the number of days of school, use something like a 10 frame where the students can still see the individual units. They're grouped together into 10s but they can still see the individual units if they're not ready to actually physically count by 10. So they still see that they feel like a 10 is a 10, um, is a set of 10 ones still. Uh, this teacher here, she even went as far as uh, 
grouping them by fives almost by switching the, the color every time she got to a new set of five. One other suggestion is you can use counting links. So you can link together uh, sets of 10. Uh, one, one thing that I did was I had hooks for hundreds, tens, and ones with my counting links. And every time I got to a length of 10, I moved that whole chain over to the 10, um, to the 10 hook. And then when I had 10 chains of 10, I moved that whole chain, that whole bundle of chains over to the hundreds hook. So the students could really see the, the increasing size between the different places. Uh, so like we said, one strategy that or one thing that you could do during calendar time is to focus on counting the days of school using tools or manipulatives. Uh, you might put marbles in a fishbowl to track the days of school or using those counting links to track the this teacher here, uh, I believe this was a first grade teacher, she started by uh, counting the days of 10 by having two sections uh, on her chart and every time she got she had a complete 10 frame. She would move the 10 frame over to the tens section and she would label each section with a digit. So obviously they're in the 12th day of school and she labeled this as 12. This will really help then when the, this teacher gets the third quarter and she's teaching place value because the students already had some prior knowledge of Here's another way a teacher did this. Uh, she tracked the days of school but using pennies and for each 10 or each group of pennies, she would then use a dime to represent uh, that that's another way of grouping or stating the value of those 10 pennies. And then she circled when she got to 100 and she showed that that also uh, could, you could use a dollar to represent that quantity. Uh, this teacher, every day the students were asked to represent the date, and this was a kindergarten classroom. Each day uh, they would represent the date, and they would see all the different ways that they could build that date. So here they're trying to find the different ways to build that date of five. Uh, so they're using one and four, they might use two and three, um, five and just five. Uh, so all the different ways that they can build five. Here's another way, um, this I believe was first or second grade, uh, some different ways to represent the date. Uh, here they were focusing on the date, which was nine. Uh, so they used the strategy of doubles plus one. So yesterday they used the strategy of doubles to find the date, uh, which was the eighth. And then they added a plus one or one more now to find uh, the quantity nine. And then after they found that quantity, the students were asked to see all the different ways or jot down all the different um, equations that they could use uh, related to that nine. So any subtraction equations. Um, it's almost working with the fact families here. Well, what I like about this is that all the students are engaged in this activity plus the five activity on the previous slide. Students can be working at their spot on the carpet or at their table, and every student's engaged, not just that calendar helper. And here's just another example of that. This was a second grade example, just working with a, a larger date and just looking at the different ways to represent that date. Well, hopefully this presentation gave you a couple ideas of the types of things that you want to focus on during your calendar time or your calendar math. And the last thing I just wanted to say was, I'll make sure that no matter what you're doing with this math, as you're focusing on the major work of the grade or those major standards, just make sure that you're focusing on making sure that all the students are doing the thinking, the talking, and the mathematics, and it's not you doing the thinking, the talking, and the mathematics. Well, thank you for participating in today's module. Have a good day.